to call the October 1st, 2020 meeting of the City of Santa Cruz Planning Commission to order. Could we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Spellman. Here. Conway. Here. Dawson. Here. Maxwell. Here. Nielsen. Here. Greenberg. Chair Schifrin. Here. So we don't have anyone with notification. Hopefully Commissioner Green will appear. Are there any statements of oral communication? I mean, statements of disqualification? Seeing, hearing none, I will move to oral communications. Is there anybody on the line who would like to uh, speak to an item that's not on the agenda but properly before the commission for up to three minutes? I do see somebody has their hand raised, so I'm going to, um, ah, one, two, three. Okay, I will start at the top. Speaker, you're on the line. Please give your name, and uh, you have three minutes. Welcome. Speaker, you're on the line. Are they muted? I just asked them to unmute. skip that one. On to the next. Speaker, you're on the line. So for the members of the public uh, who have their hands raised, this is the time for oral communications. If you wish to address the board on an item that is not on the agenda, now would be the time to press star nine to indicate. Otherwise, please lower your hand if you're waiting to speak on another item. Speaker, you're on the line. And now we have another speaker. You're on the line. Are you here to speak for oral communications? It's the time to speak for items that are not on the agenda for up to three minutes. Chair Shepherd, could we just remind the public that they might need to unmute both the computer and the phone that they're using to call in? That may help. So you may need to unmute two things in order to be able to speak. Um, unless there's an objection, I'm going to move on. And if a member of the public does ultimately turn out to want, have, to want to have spoken during uh, oral communications, I would suggest we come back and give them a whether this is a technical problem or just a, where people are here to speak on another item. So I'm going to move forward. Um, uh, the next item is the approval of the minutes. Uh, does uh, Do any of the commissioners have any changes or revisions to the minutes? from September 17th, 2020. Does anybody from the public want to speak to the uh, September 17th minutes? Seeing none, would somebody, one of the commissioners like to move approval of the September 17th minutes? I'll move. I'll move approval. Uh, well, we'll say that Commissioner Dawson moved and Commissioner Nielsen seconded. Yep. Um, is there any discussion? Can we have a roll call, please? Uh, Commissioner Nielsen? Aye. Spellman? Aye. Conway? Aye. Dawson? Aye. Maxwell? Aye. Schifrin? 
Aye. Unanimously, and we'll move on to public hearings. Item number two, um, City of Santa Cruz Wealth Master Plan and Environmental Determination. Could we have a staff report, please? Yeah, good evening. This is uh, Dave McCormick with Economic Development, uh, bringing the item forward. Um, tonight, we're just proposing a continuance of this item to a later Planning Commission date on October 15th. Um, subsequent to scheduling this meeting and notifying the public of it, of it being held, uh, we received a request from the Historic Commission for an opportunity to chime in on the, the Wharf Master Plan. And after review uh, with the City Attorney and, and internal discussions, uh, well, we believe that not necessarily a required step, we feel it's wholly appropriate that the Historic Commission has the opportunity to uh, review the master plan and comment on it, um, particularly, uh, particularly given the historic nature of the wharf structure itself, and as in um, they will have to approve uh, any historic alteration permits in, in the future related to the wharf structure. Uh, with that said, uh, you know, we're open to any comments or things you'd like us to, to uh, consider as we prepare our, our staff recommendation for the October 15th date. Okay, thank you very much. This is a public hearing, so um, it is, if anyone wants to comment on the item, even though the staff recommendation is to continue it, it looks like all the members of the public have disappeared. Um, I um, submitted before, uh, just before the meeting a letter to staff that I'd like to have added to the agenda when this item comes uh, returns on the 15th. Um, is there any problem with that happening? Mr. Butler? Good afternoon, Chair Schifrin and Commissioners. Um, there is not a problem with um, either a conversation amongst the Commission um, or um, with uh, presenting the information that you have submitted. I would um, remind the Commission that if um, there is any discussion or if um, information from a Commissioner is submitted that to adhere with the Brown Act that the Commissioners do not um, converse with one another on the issue to avoid uh, any um, consensus that could arise from those conversations um, outside of the public hearing. So once um, those conversations happen amongst, uh, you know, if, if one uh, report is submitted to the entire commission, then um, that can quickly become a violation of the Brown Act if there are conversations outside of the public hearing. So. We're happy to do that um, and um, just wanted to make sure that the, the Commission is aware of those implications. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so that letter will appear on the next agenda and um, commissioners, a majority of the Commission can talk about it among themselves outside of the next meeting. Um, so, so actually no, no conversations can occur among commissioners um, outside of the meeting because uh, if there are conversations that have happened or if folks start understanding the, um, the um, opinions, if, if everyone's understanding the opinion of one commissioner, then that is, uh, has the potential to act as like the hub and spokes um, of a uh, serial communication whereby, you know, the Brown Act uh, a, a key tenant of that is to avoid um, any um, uh, consensus building outside of a uh, uh, of a public hearing setting. So I would recommend that there not be conversations um, if um, uh, if information is submitted or if there's conversation tonight. Um, well, as I say in my letter, I have a different. Uh, interpretation of the Brown Act, um, the public business should be done in public, um, and that's when a majority. That's why it requires that a majority of the uh, of the public body not discuss an item outside of the outside of the public meeting. But I hear what the um, the direct, plan director said, and the um, commissioners can do what they will. So um, 
Are there any comments from the commissioners on this item um, as opposed to just accepting the staff recommendation? Yes, Commissioner Dawson. Yeah, Chair Schifrin, I just am um, looking at the, um, it, it appears that a couple folks have their hands raised, and so maybe we could go back and just hear from them if they, they have something to say about this item. Um, that's all I had to say. I uh, haven't closed the public hearing, so it would be totally appropriate if there, I don't see anybody there. You, you can see more than I can. So um, if there are members of the public who would like to speak on this item, understanding that it undoubtedly will be continued to the October 15th meeting. Um, just raise your hand and um, you can be called on. This is the clerk. There is one member and I'm going to allow them to talk. For the other two people on the line, if you wish to speak to this item, please press star nine and you'll be called I on. I see one participant, time. public 9921. I don't know if somebody can let yes. them in. Yes, I see that. Okay, you have to unmute yourself and then you have up to three minutes. So, member of the public. And you may have to unmute both your phone and your computer. The member of the public right now that we have online and ready to, to speak, please press star six to unmute your phone so that we can hear you. We've already allowed you to talk. Repeat the last four of the number test. 9921. The member of the public whose phone number ends in 9921, it appears you have not correctly connected to audio. Please dial back in if you can. Well, welcome, Commissioner Greenberg. You're just in time um, for us to finish our consideration of item number two. If uh, the member of the public 9921 uh, wants to speak to this uh, item and is able to unmute themselves. Um, could I ask the clerk if the member of the public has raised their hand to speak on this item? Yes, there are two members of the public with their hands raised. The one that has the floor now, last four numbers, 9921, is not connecting to the audio. I've asked them to unmute, but they either need to press star six to unmute their phone or call back in. Oh, here we go. Hello. 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 Oh, I've been trying, I'm sorry, I've been trying forever. It, the directions didn't include star six. I've unmuted my phone and I'm sorry. I was trying to speak during oral communications, but I couldn't figure out the star six. It's not in these directions. Is that what you, um, um, did you want to speak on this item as well or just the oral communications? Oral communications. I have a lot to say about the wharf master plan, but not right now. No, thank you. But Okay, when, well, um, I, we, I encourage you to put on the directions that we see online because I couldn't figure it out at all and, and heard there were other people and maybe they couldn't figure it out. Well, that's it says on the directions just to press star nine and wait to raise your hand if you wish to comment. It doesn't say unmute or star six. So um, I'll wait. When will or communications be allowed? I, unless there are, uh, is a lot of more discussion on this item, it should be uh, quite soon. So hang in there. Thank uh, you. Maybe that's a good direction to staff to clarify the directions on the agenda so people know it's a, a new pressing star six. We're all struggling with this technology, uh, which is not simple. So Chair, is there no, Chair, is this there is Sarah. A, Clerk number two, um, I just want to clarify for the last speaker, did she want to or not want to speak on the wharf item? She does not want to speak on the wharf item. She wants to speak on oral communications. Okay, so just to be clear, besides star six, anyone who has phone called in, you can press the mute and unmute button on your telephone, and that will also unmute your phone. It does not have to be star six, but it is also an option. Is there another member of the public who has their hand raised? There is. Do you want to speak on this item or oral communications 
If you don't want to speak on this item, but on oral communications, you can lower your hand, because once we're done with this item, we will go back to oral communication. So if you want to speak on this item, please unmute your phone, star six, or unmute, and start speaking. You're okay. on the line. Okay. It's amazing I'm on the line. Thank you for calling on me. I've been trying since also since the start of the meeting to unmute my phone without direction on how to do that. I wish to speak on oral communications. Well, you're going I don't know how to unraise my hand because that well, instruction is also just, not on your... I you just uh, wait quietly uh, okay. and I'll call on you when we're done with this item, okay? Whoops, it looks like you muted yourself. All right, is there anybody else out there who wants to speak on this item? We will go back to oral communications when we're done with this item. No one else has raised their hand, Chair. Seeing no one, would somebody like to make a motion to continue this uh, item to our October 15th meeting? I'll move to continue the item till October 15th. Thank you. I'll second. There's been a motion by Commissioner Nielsen, seconded by Con Commissioner Dawson, yeah. to continue the item. Can we have a roll call vote, please? Commissioner Nielsen? Aye. Spellman? Aye. Conway? Aye. Greenberg? Aye. Dawson? Aye. Maxwell? Aye. Chair Schiffer? Aye. Okay, thank you very much. It passes unanimously. This item will be on our October 15th meeting. Let us now return to oral communications and our frustrated callers who will now have a chance to talk to us for up to three minutes on an item that is not on the agenda. So you now know the way to do it, so hopefully it won't be a problem. So, uh, Clerk, will you call one of the... Okay, member of the public, with the last four digits of 4370, oh, you're on the line. Please unmute yourself. Okay. Thank you. There you go. I suggest when you tell us to unmute ourselves, please tell us to put star six for future. Thank you. Hello, my name is Susan Monheit, and I am wanting to comment on the 101 Felix Street, the proposed development that would require the city council to pass a general plan amendment and then spot rezone that specific parcel to accommodate a developer who wants to put in a lucrative um, additional housing of up to 80 units there. I think that bypassing the public democratic participation process that was entered into to build the general plan that took seven years is, I don't even have words for it, not a good idea. Spot rezoning is very bad planning, and I urge anyone who has any vote in that to oppose it. I would not want to see a Coastal Commission amendment to a plan in order to comment to uh, accommodate this developer either um, a couple of things and I'll try to be brief when you have 80 percent plus bonus densities that brings it up to 90 percent of public uh, of uh, housing being at prime rate then it skews the basis on which the affordable housing uh, cost is calculated and what you end up with is affordable housing for people who make one to two hundred thousand dollars a year and it's not really affordable and will not support the working people who serve this community i would also like to say that the cypress point development project just another example of how badly managed it is is that last week there was a there are sewer problems. There are sewer leaks all over the part, the property, and the contractor who is fixing it asked everyone in the complex to park on the street. So if you think that adding 80 more units won't have parking, um, 
uh, uh, repercussions to the neighborhood, that's really, really wrong. In this case, everybody left to park on the street, and many, many of those people got tickets because they don't have parking permits. So that contractor did not ask people in one area to park on the street one day and in another area to park on a street another day. They, they blanketly asked everyone to do it, and that's um, typical of the way that property is mismanaged on a regular basis. So please, please, if you have any ability to stop and discontinue the proposed project at 101 Felix Street, I urge you to do so for the neighborhood, for the community, for the protection of the environment. Thank you. Thank you. Can we hear from the next speaker, please? Hello, is it my turn? You're on the line. Thank you. It's been a long wait. Okay, so I have three very important questions. My name is Kersha Durham. I have lived on Felix Street. I want to speak to that 101 Felix Street as well. I've lived here 17 years. I also speak for many of my neighbors who've lived here 75 years. We didn't move to downtown, um, and it's remarkable just as a teacher to be able to um, live in an area, share the area with other we, if you don't know our area, we have the lion's share of density. Please come to our street. Even during COVID, there's not one parking space. And often I know this neighborhood very well. Often Cypress Point has four to six people in their one bedroom. They do this to create affordable housing. So my question is, you know, this is a long day. I've been teaching all day, and I'm just, I don't understand the system. I haven't been Getting, getting an answer from Ryan Bain, how does the city council vote to deny with prejudice, and how is it allowed to come back again, that it has to be re-voted with people who weren't there for the entire public hearing? Please answer that question. My second question is about density. I've done the math. Um, Ryan Bain's numbers, I took his numbers, and he's saying that 20% of the 80, that's 16, will be affordable but they get this bonus. So they could build up to 120. That means on that parcel, there would be 16 out of 360. So do the math, that's about 4.5% affordable. And I wanna be clear, you know, we have our lion's share of affordability. People have lived here longer than I in, in apartments nearby that are truly affordable and they could not afford teachers could not afford the 2400 That management is egregious. They tack on fees. They gouge people. They've had constant, I walk that area, they have had constant leaks, and they charge the tenants for their leaks. Um, so I'm just curious, if the density, with the density bonus, you are not giving very much affordable housing. And then my third question is around um, the area um, median income this point well that was brought up already so I'm just going to say that if you oh the density non-conforming density so the question is should they be able to double their density because they're going up 20 dwelling units they're already at 27 they're non-conforming and, and they're asking to go up to 30 dwelling units per acre well in actuality do the math 16 divided by 360 um, the math is, we'll actually bring them up with 360 on an 8.8 .8 parcel. That is 41 dwelling units per acre. So please tell me, how are they, how are they going from non-conforming and asking to be doubling their density in an area that is the most dense already? This will not be workforce. They claim it's workforce housing. It will not be workforce housing. Please answer those questions about how this vote to deny with prejudice is happening again. I do not understand the process. It seems very unjust all along. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this project is not before the commission. It has not been before the commission. It's before the city council. I think the questions are more appropriate to be brought 
to the city council meeting. My understanding is it's, the item is scheduled for the next city council meeting. So that would be a time to raise your questions if you're dissatisfied with what is being recommended at that time, or even if you're satisfied with it. Are there any other members of the public who would like to speak during oral communication? Yes. Okay. Here you're on the line. Please unmute your phone. Can you hear me? Okay, yes. Uh, please identify yourself, and you have up to three minutes. Okay. Um, my name is Chris Dager, and I am a resident of about 12 years on Felix Street, and I am calling in opposition to um, the 101 project, 101 Felix project, just for um, what the previous ladies have mentioned, and also what they haven't as far as one, um, it's an archeological sensitive site. And if you go through the general plan, I hope all of you guys have being on the planning commission and you read over it and you look at all the discrepancies of what this project would violate anywhere from archaeology to liquefaction zone, a FEMA tsunami zone, a zone. There's only one way of egress in and out of there. So if there's a fire or flood or anything to get anybody out of there, it would just be a bounce show. Um, it isn't a fire heavy, a uh, fire hazard warning zone. Um, and these issues alone would just tell me that this is not a good idea to put more housing, to put more housing in this spot. Can you guys hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Not well. Uh, so that's that's pretty much all I have to say. Is it's it's not in a good place to to, to develop in. Um, I invite you all. Thank you very much. Uh, is there anyone else who wants to speak to this item? Or to oral, on oral communications, it doesn't have to just be on this item. It can be on another item if there is the interest. Hello. Hi. Yes. Oh, hi. So uh, I guess I'm, I'm live now. So my name is Sandra Ivany. I live um, right uh, near Neary Lagoon, adjacent to Cypress Point. Um, I have been working with the committee for many years to maintain the lagoon to, uh, uh, obviously I'm not maintaining the lagoon, but as a citizens group that's overseeing that. And it is a very um, sensitive, delicate uh, ecosystem with 240 species of birds. And the Department of Public Works uh, has a budget of uh, about $300,000 per year to maintain the lagoon, to pull the tulies, take care of it. Um, the site, uh, while uh, it's four different buildings, the Cypress Point development is four different buildings and comes very close to the lagoon. But I, I don't really want to dwell on that in my, in my time because that should seem kind of obvious. And I realize it's not before the commission right now, so we're kind of chirping in uh, at a time when it's not even before you. But I think that many of us feel ex extremely passionate about this for a variety of reasons that have been mentioned. The city plan that took seven years to develop and had input from 100 hours of citizen communication, the, the environmental issues with, with building there, the, the social justice issues that was meant, mentioned about the rents and escalating the rents, the gentrification, the parking, the safety. There's many issues. Um, and we've been, many of us have been writing about them, so it's almost redundant to talk about them. But the one I wanted to talk about right now and the time left that kind of struck me today is the democratic process. Because when COVID started and the lockdown started, we've gathered in the first month, month and a half, 3,000 signatures that were opposed to this development. And uh, while we're fighting on the national level to keep our democracy here, I feel like we're also having a fight here in Santa Cruz, where you have um, um, a city government 
that doesn't seem to be listening to the community's um, wisdom uh, with the library garage and with this one and with many others. Uh, growth is really not something that's unlimited, and I think we've discovered that. Um, we don't have the resources for unlimited growth in Santa Cruz. We don't have the water, the roads, any of it. And um, um, when this comes, uh, hopefully this is not going to come before you because we are wondering why it's going to be voted on a second time when it's already been voted on once and the citizenry has already put in so much energy on this that... Um, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, I'm just talking about democratic process, guys, and thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Is there anybody else uh, in the public? who wants to speak during oral communication. All clear. All clear, okay. Um, so oral, I'm gonna close oral communications now, move on to the rest of the agenda. Are there any information items from staff or anyone else? Uh, yes, I have one. Um, good evening, commissioners. Uh, Eric Marlette, assistant director. Um, I just wanted to report that um, the nine-unit townhouse development at 914-916 Seabright Avenue was approved by the uh, City Council on September 22nd. Um, I'll note that when your commission reviewed that project last June, um, the developer hadn't had the incomes verified of the three tenants that were occupying the, the units on the property. And so under the demolition authorization permit ordinance, the assumption is made that they're either low or moderate income, therefore replacement housing uh, requirements are triggered. Um, between the planning commission meeting and the council meeting, the applicant went ahead and got one of the uh, tenants' um, incomes verified through the housing authority and it was determined that they were in fact not uh, low or moderate income, so therefore the, uh, the replacement housing provisions were no longer triggered. Um, so that sort of became a moot point. The other uh, item that was a fairly significant discussion involving public access between Sumner and Seabright, uh, the, the council concurred with your recommendation and opted not to require that as, as conditions of approval, so, um, so that was not included. Um, but that project was approved uh, unanimously by the council. Um, looking at the schedule for the upcoming meetings, mm -hmm. uh, in addition to the wharf plan, which you just continued to October 15th, um, we also have the inclusionary housing ordinance amendments involving the Section 8 vouchers um, scheduled for that meeting as well. And then looking out to uh, the first meeting in November, um, we're targeting that as a potential date for the slope ordinance to return to you. Uh, and then there's a possibility that a transitional housing project at 119 Coral might be scheduled for that meeting as well. So that's, those are the informational items. Thanks. I'm done. Thank you very much. Any questions from commissioners? Okay, the next uh, item is subcommittee advisory body oral reports. And does any other commissioner have, an, um, we just sort of got the report from the housing subcommittee. Is I actually can give you a report of some from the Resilient Coast Technical Advisory Committee, which I have uh, uh, representing the commission on. As you know, um, the Caltrans has study, uh, funded a study and the Coastal Commission has funded a study to look at the coast, uh, the beaches, um, starting at Seabright and then looking at uh, doing a study along West Cliff in terms of how to um, make the coast, quote, more resilient. And it's getting near the end, so I think it may be worth it for me to uh, let you know. I'm sure Tiffany Wise West will be here uh, when it's ready to go, but I want to give you a little preview of where it seems to be heading. Um, the the plan will include a cost-benefit analysis, um, although um, it's a very difficult analysis to do given so many of the variables. There are going to be four options in looking at the different segments of the coast. Um, business as usual, 
recreation-focused action, pr protection-focused actions, and managed retreat. Um, so there are going to be different projects for each uh, zone, and it goes from the immediate 10 to 15 years to longer term with some midterm as well, and it's, the plan is going to define triggers. It's not so much that those dates are in themselves set in stone, but there'll be triggers in the plan for when it makes sense to move from, let's say, uh, recreational focused actions to uh, in one zone to um, protect the, the coastline to um, you know the next uh, the next kind of action. There's uh, a lot they were dealing with uncertainty around the probability of sea level rise. There is economic eva evaluation and net present value, um, the recreational values, um, and um, among it seemed like uh, between the four different approaches, it had a minim minimus, uh, the minimus effect on transportation. So the major findings were recreational focus had the highest positive net present value. Managed retreat was similar, but only if it was done recently. The protection focus was also positive, but less. And business as usual actually also had a positive um, uh, impact, but uh, a smaller one. So there's going to be a, a, a preferred adaptation strategy for each of the seven zones, and I'll spare you uh, going through them. Uh, I did take notes. If anybody's interested, I'd be happy to share them. Um, but I just mainly I want to let you know that the, the I think the expectation is that the plan is going to be completed over the next few months and in early next year it's going to go through the process, which is going to involve a recommended local, local coastal program amendment. So it will be coming to the commission formally for recommendation to the council uh, on the plan. Any, does anybody have a question? Seeing none, um, are there any items to be referred to the next agenda that commissioners would like to bring up? Seeing none, thank you all very much. We did get out of here somewhat early, not as early as I expected, but uh, see you all on the 15th. We are now adjourned.